everybody. I am so happy to bring in my guest today, Stephanie Ignafo from Plantspiration. She brings all the inspiration to us uh, as we do New Year, New You. Stephanie, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Elizabeth. How are you? I, the the year has started off with such a bang. It is so exciting. You and I were talking, you yeah. know, right before the show, like, oh gosh, we are riding this wave. And I actually don't think that the, I know, hands up, that the plant-based, whole food plant-based movement, I don't even know if we've caught the wave yet. I feel like that wave is right behind me and I'm about to get up on the board and like take it for a long ride. It is off the charts. Are you feeling the same? It is not slowing down. It is not going away. The momentum continues to pick up. And I think it's just 2021. It's all about the plans. Yeah, it's all about the plants. About I just plants. feel like we are to the moon. Okay, so yeah. we're going to get into plantspiration and both of our tips because we both, you know, try to help people make that transition over to a whole food plant-based diet. And uh, we both teach. <laughs> We've both been through the same um programs with oh how i love you yeah. physicians committee for responsible medicine the food for life program and t colin yeah. campbell as well dr campbell uh but you have a very interesting story so before we get yeah. to recipes and tips in the kitchens and tricks for going to parties and all these kind of things tell me how did you come to this journey well in 2013, my daughter Haley was 15 at the time, and she came home and she said, uh, she came home from school. She said, Mom, I want to go vegan. And I said, no way. It's not happening. Worst idea in the world. You're going to wow. die of protein deficiency. You're going to, you know, not have calcium. I truly believed, Elizabeth, that, you know, this was going to be the worst thing she could ever do. She had mentioned that she was reading this book that, you know, didn't use animals for their own self. I understood the logic. So in that moment, I backed her up on, all right, I'll go along with your fad diet. But I went to the internet to search, you know, how long can we live without eating meat? How long could we survive? Will she make it a week? Little did I know, uh, not only can we survive, we can actually thrive. So um, after John and I were finishing up on what would be our ninth surgery in 11 months, I went back and I revisited for a minute that Forks Over Knife documentary that I had uh, mm -hmm. come across, seeing how long my daughter could live. I sat my family down and, you know, I thought we were healthy, you know, eating our mm -hmm. lean chicken, eating our low fat, you know, milk and our low fat cheese. But after I watched this movie, I just realized here I was enabling these these diseases, you know, mm -hmm. here I was bringing the food in, I was making my husband overweight, I was helping my son with mm -hmm. his childhood obesity, watching mm -hmm. my girls struggle with, you know, energy and mm -hmm. skin, I realized we were all being affected by what I was bringing home. So mm -hmm. I went cold to furky, as they say, and we stopped bringing animal in the house altogether. And we lost 250 pounds, Elizabeth, on accident eating our plants off over here. So a hundred of that was mine. The the rest was the rest of my family. It was a huge impact. And I couldn't stop talking about it after that. I felt like everybody should know that this is awesome. I've tried everything. Nothing has worked like this. All the other diets that I had tried, yeah, I may have lost a couple pounds here and there, but my entire life I had been obese. I had just found what worked and it didn't just help me lose weight, it helped me reverse diseases. And it's easily, I kept it off easily eight years later, the whole family, we're still cranking the plan. And yeah, yeah. I, I love this story because you are every mom in America, you start thinking like, what? My kid's gonna die. That's just crazy talk. Yeah. And then if you particularly, it always helps to have a teenage daughter. <laughs> They're so very convincing. So if yeah. you say like, oh, okay, fine, I'll follow you on a lark for two weeks. I'll be supportive, mom. And then lo and behold, you find 250 pounds later, kids have more energy. Skin yeah. is better. You're reversing lifestyle diseases. I hadn't realized you were on surgery number nine to yeah. help you for complications with uh, obesity. You, you said that, and everything, uh, you said that you lost 100 of the 250. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a picture there, I'd love to see it. Wow. Here, let's pull that down a little bit. Oh, my gosh. That is before. Yeah. That, I, I wouldn't even be able to see that that is you. For anybody listening on podcast, it's it's a completely different person. Oh, my God. That, that wasn't even my heaviest. 
this was me feeling pretty good. I've got the tank top on, you know, I was <laughs> down to, you know, a good weight. You know, this was as good as I thought it 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 gets. You know, here we're living the standard American life. We're getting older. We get bigger. We get sicker. Isn't that the way that uh, we think this goes? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell people it's, that's not the way it goes. Yeah. That, I tell that all the time too. You are here to take back your health. People think that this is sort of a rite of passage. We get older, so we get sick. No, it does not have to be that way. In fact, you can take back not just your health, but your youth. In many ways, I feel, I mean, I've always had a lot of energy, but in many ways I felt like, oh my gosh, I've got this newfound, like, you know, lightning bolt in my step. I had no idea that I was holding myself back. And once I let my yeah. fingers do the walking, oh, hello, Google. And you have to be careful, oh, right? Because yeah. there is lots of confusing information out there. But once I started on the path and I was getting good sources of information, so Stephanie or myself or Physicians Committee for Responsive Medicine or T Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Dr. McDougal, yeah. there are all these doctors out there that can help you. Once you open that door, you're like, oh my gosh, my health was kind of kept from me. It really was. It really was. Nobody told me about this. Nobody explained I could be eating all that I want. I didn't have to restrict. I didn't have to count. I didn't have to measure. I didn't have to weigh. This was glorious. We were waking up every day, you know, just the scale was actually moving and it didn't stop. It's yeah. like it took us to where we should be naturally, which is what I love. We're going to have to break for uh, just a quick commercial, which I hate to do. But when we come back, we're going to talk about how natural and easy this was. And like, whoops, I lost some weight too to boot. We'll be right back on yeah. plant-based life and style. Oh, everybody watching us on Facebook and our Twitter and everything else. I'm so happy to have Stephanie here. We're doing a quick commercial break for radio, but we're going to get right back into it because I love Stephanie's energy. We've been friends for a while, but also um, her story. So here we go. We are right back to, hey, everybody, it is Plant-Based Life and Style. I'm here for another segment with Stephanie Ignafo of Plantspiration. Stephanie and I both help people make the transition over to a whole foods plant-based diet. And we were talking right before the break about how you didn't even think you'd lose weight. And what's even more beautiful about that is just when you switched by not bringing in meat and dairy, no animal products, yeah. you get this new lease on life that you didn't even think was coming without all the effort. I mean, you're basically eating your way out of this problem. It is literally, uh, I've even used this phrase, it's like eating yourself out of the grave. It. It. I was yeah. near death. We were very sick. We were... I don't think I'd be here today and I'm going to be 50 this year. So, you know, I went from a walker, you know, practically using a walker. I could wow. barely walk around Elizabeth to I'm riding a hundred miles a week on my bike effortlessly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that I could live this yeah. life. So that's why, you know, we're as passionate as we are because people should know. Yes. I, I feel this way as well that people have, you know, you talked about like, well, nobody told me this. Your doctors weren't telling you you had Never surgery, went. but nobody was saying like, hey, you know, think about your diet here. All these things could be fixed without pills. You can get that new lease on life, get your health back, kind of roll back the clock, yeah. like age backwards. And why aren't people telling you this it, it, for a while? I don't know if you felt this way, but for a while I thought like, hey, I feel like I've been perhaps intentionally led astray. I felt very cheated a bit. Did you ever feel this way? Uh, it took a long time for me to get over the anger I had mm -hmm. for how many years that I would ask, you know, uh, there was doctor's appointments every week, every month, year after year, mm -hmm. autoimmune, you know, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. uh, advanced osteoarthritis, I could barely walk, diverticulitis. I'm sure nobody wants to listen to all these chronic diseases, but they all came with the chronic, uh, with, with the standard American diet. Mm -hmm. Nobody said, hey, did you know if you stopped taking, you know, eating animal or dr right. drinking milk that you could get rid of inflammatory issues, that right. you could like clear your arteries out? Not one person said that, but I have a pile of prescriptions that, you know, that I never filled because I didn't know what more problems were coming with that. Right, so, right. Yeah. I love that you say that. It's not only very expensive to be sick. So the pills and the doctor's appointments and the waiting and the frustration and the never getting better, you know, you're not curing anything. You're just, oh no. you know, sometimes people will say to me, oh, but do we really need a whole foods plant-based diet? You know, we're living longer. And I say, you are not living longer. You're dying longer. You're, you know, using walkers and you've got pills, but that's, come on, you could have real life with your grandkids and you're not getting that. You're just kind of tick tock, tick tock, waiting for the grave. So um, it's, it's very frustrating and very expensive. Frustrating. 
uh, one of the hardest parts about being plant-based or being vegan, Elizabeth, and I'm sure you can agree, it's watching others eat themselves to death. Yes. It's hard to see. It's one of the biggest uh, concerns with my wonderful clients and my groups. You know, they start getting better. And then it's like, what about everybody else? And I say, I know, I know. But let's just work on you first. And yes. that's what this year is all about. You. Yes. Yes, I love that. As you say, new year, new you. So you've been doing this for a while and I have as well. What kind of changes are you seeing in terms of the reception people are giving you about this? Like in the beginning, you yourself said like, this is crazy. I'm not going to do this with my daughter. And then you switched over. Are you seeing that other people are welcoming this change? It's honestly the, um, almost miraculous. It, could, it yeah. brings a tear to my eyes. I was going to say, it brings me to tears. <laughs> yeah. They thought I was crazy. They yeah. thought our family was nuts. We were ostracized. We went through a mm -hmm. lot. I said to the family, stay strong. They don't know what's coming along. Now they thought that we were crazy. Now they're asking us for for help, and I'm glad to give it. Yeah, that I just, I yeah. just, I love your story. I love it so much. So you are feeling like out there. You know, both of us are from Illinois. I spend a lot of time in Los yeah. Angeles. We're both around the Chicago area as well. I see that the the perception is shifting yeah. that I mean oh, obviously yeah. it's going more mainstream you you see a lot yeah. of commercials now about plant-based items but um in your community what's the reception to going 100% vegan or are people just thinking oh I'll I'm I'll have a beyond burger once and we can talk about beyond burgers and if it's healthy or not as well but um are they just thinking like oh I'll I'll go meatless Mondays or are people diving in well, if I talk about something uh, at the supermarket, we, we it sells out. So they're listening, whether it be plant-based, you know, they're, we're using the bridge foods. We're getting people there, depending on where they're at is depending on where I go. But for the animals, for the planet, for your health, anything vegan, we're going in the right direction. And I encourage it. So people know where to go. They're, they're definitely embracing it. The restaurants are popping up. I will say to any of the restaurants looking, we have a lot of people still looking for whole food, plant-based, no oil. Uh, you know, I love that we're seeing it everywhere, but I want to keep it healthy too. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to see this repeat the obesity and the the diseases with a lot of these really amazing foods. But still, we could clean it up sometimes too. Yeah, but yeah, well, people are embracing. People are embracing. I see the exact same thing. And, you know, I do have a sister podcast called the Plant Based Business Hour, where I talk about a lot of business statistics. And you are going to see that trend. You're going to see more commercialized products that are healthier for you, that are really right. trying to take the oils out and, and have cleaner labels. You know, it's one of the great things from a business standpoint is you can't do anything with meat and dairy like that. That is what it is. But plant based foods are just beginning to be discovered, yeah. worked on, ameliorated. Rated. So you're going to see a lot of healthier options there. It's really so very exciting. I know. Yes, I feel the same. So That's um, exciting. what are some of the hurdles that come that people come to you with? Are they usually starting with, I just don't feel great? Or are they wanting to lose weight? What are what's like the first entry door for people? Weight loss is definitely up there with number one. And with the new year, this is on everybody's mind, January 1. Ironically, we started January 4th or 5th, and this was not my resolution. It was just yeah. accidental. But what a great time to take on new habits. And yeah, weight loss is number one. Uh, a lot of people are whole food plant-based, but they're not sure why it's not working. So that's probably number two up there with what I get. And a lot of let's get rid of these diseases. Yes, I love that. That that to me is almost the most hopeful. Of course, I want people to lose weight, and it's so fun yeah. and it's so motivating. And you, know, you lose some pounds, yeah. and you want to do more of it. So it's so wonderful to take that perspective. But when you can see people really add years to their life, so that yeah. reversal, that's really the most exciting when you can get rid of those lifestyle diseases. Um, it's so the greatest. We're going to have to break, but if you could give me like one sentence, what do you see as to why people aren't uh, having a good reaction to whole food plant-based or an immediate reaction? Not eating enough. Oh, oh my. They're oh, not coming. eating their plants off. They're not even get to work, people. You heard her. Eat your plants up. We're gonna head right to break. We'll be right back. It's plant based life and style. Oh, Facebook isn't Stephanie great? She's so awesome. So happy. YouTube, Twitter, love you as well. So um, I love all the the 
the jewels of nuggets that you're giving. And uh, we've got lots of information to share, folks. So do not go away. Here we go. Hey, it's Plant-Based Life and Style. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, but even more importantly, I am here with Stephanie Ignafo of Plantspiration. So we are talking right before the break. If you've started a whole foods plant-based diet and you feel like, hey, this isn't kicking in enough, um, good news, eat more. Stephanie, pick up on that thought. <laughs> It's exactly what goes on. A lot of people, you know, it's a new year. You're starting, you think in a new diet, but I want people to cut that out right now. We're going to think lifestyle. This is just the life. Um, we're not going to get into like, I need a little bit of this, or I need to cut off this, or I need to hold off on this. If you're working with us, you know, it's no limit, no restrictions. But th that is truly what holds people back. They like eat a little bit, a little bit of this, and they come back, they say the scale didn't move. And I say, are you eating all of this? And they think I can't. They come back the next week, they've eaten way more than they thought they could, and the scale drops. So I literally tell people, we have to eat our pants off in order yeah. for the pants to fall off. This is how it goes. I love so you're when you say like, have you eaten this and you're making with your hands for those podcast lovers, you're making this big circle. You're saying like stuff yourself with broccoli. Is that what you're saying? Or what are you saying when eat, eat your eat your plants off? So we are talking like the fresh, the raw. What are you talking about exactly? Yeah. Grains, legumes, beans, fruits, vegetables, no limit. Eat all you want. But it doesn't have to be plain like that. We can be turning these these very beautiful whole foods into tacos and pizzas and lasagnas. There's no holding back. So if you're on a whole food, plant-based, low fat, no oil, everything that we want to do to improve quality of life, it literally is don't hold back. Eat this food, nourish that body, kick those diseases <laughs> to the curb, let those pants come off. It, it works. This yeah, it, is what holds people back is not eating enough. Yeah, it works. It's a joy. You get to be creative in the kitchen. You don't have to be a yeah. slave in the kitchen. Nothing about it yeah. is hard. We're going to go over this right now. Yep. And uh, it's all accessible. You get to eat your way out of it. It's it's really a, a huge amount of fun. So when we say, yeah. just to everybody, we're going to get into tips now. When we say whole food plant-based, like she was saying, we're talking about legumes and beans and whole grains. So, you know, things that fill you. And of course, broccoli and of course, carrots and these sorts of things. But, you know, you're not going to limit yourself to like, oh gosh, I have a stick of carrot. You will never be hungry. We're not, we're not talking about, because this is not a diet. This is just shifting what you eat. You're going to eat more of it and a lot of it. And it's things like, so here are some of my favorite recipes and, and uh, Stephanie can share hers as well. For mine, you can go to elizabethalfano.com slash recipes. For Stephanie, you can go to plantspiration.org. But I do a lot of my own recipes. And so I have a great breakfast bowl that I love, which is just raw tofu. No, don't panic, people. Tofu is a blank slate. You can add some sugar to it. I mean, sugar is not where you want to be, but you could add some, you know, sweetener to it if you wanted in terms of like maple syrup, or you could make it savory with um, spices like chipotle, you know, so it can, it's just a blank slate. So I do that and raw oats and one tablespoon of date syrup. Thank you, Dr. Gregor, for turning me on to great date syrup, yeah. hemp seeds and raw berries. And I'm talking like 17, 18 grams of protein just in the morning. So I love that. Um, and there's really great tacos you can do, black bean sweet yeah. potato tacos, some of my favorites. And then I like to make homemade seitan. I don't know if you do that at all, but oh no, you are gluten-free. I, I am gluten-free, but I encourage everybody to try the seitan. I cannot believe what we have available. So people right away think, oh, well, I can't give up my meat. We're not giving up the flavor. Yeah. We're just giving up the disease, the death, mm -hmm. the, yeah. you know. So it can be done, anything. It's amazing. So, you know, I tell people, if you throw a log into the fire, you know, how long is it going to burn? It's going to burn all day long. We've got a lot of fire coming. But if we throw in those, you know, twigs, we're going to, it's going to go out fast. I don't want people eating like twigs and their little carrots and their celery sticks. I want people eating logs, okay? Lots, mm -hmm. lots of this food. That's how we boost that metabolism. That's how we get this up and running and why we're all so amped up over here. It's, it's just the plant. Yeah. And I love what you're saying. You know, the reason people eat meat, it's not because of the meat, it's because of all the spices. So yeah. just, we're going to use those same spices. Some of my favorites, we're getting yeah. into other kinds yeah. of tips, but 
please have paprika in your kitchen, cumin and soy sauce. I put those together and it's automatically yeah. just uh, something I can cover my seitan with. Seitan, for those of you who may not know, it's very easy to make and or buy. Um, it yeah. is just the protein of the wheat. So yes, grains have protein, even fruit has protein, mushrooms have protein. So we're going to get over the protein question. You're going to get everything. everything has protein. I mean, animals get their protein from plants. So, you know, I, that's go to the source. I, I love telling that to people because I had, I too had the same expression, like, why didn't they teach us this in, in grade school? All, you know, protein comes from plants. Yes. Right. Yes. But and it, we wouldn't have any work though, Elizabeth, if, if they would have told us that. So here we are letting them know I, now. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yes, that's true. But it's frustrating. I mean, I, I really did have that period where I was like, oh gosh, this, this is like basic information that was kept from me. And why don't we have nutrition in school? And why don't doctors get nutrition in medical school? That's always like more a mind blown. I mean, more yeah, importantly, yeah. And it's completely freaky that they can go through four years of medical school and four years of residency and they can only get four years, four hours of nutrition, sometimes eight, but usually four. Come on, it's ridiculous. And then they're advising you. I mean, Stephanie and I have had more nutrition education than the, your general practitioner. So that's just crazy yeah. in and of itself. So I love blowing people away with, you know, you are going to get so much protein so you can, you can forget that. But here's yeah. the real kicker. So it's not just that all protein comes from plants. Yeah. It's that animals, when they eat the plants, they get the protein as well. They're just doing what we would do. They're eating the plants, but they get rid of the fiber. They poop it out. Yeah. So when you have meat, you are getting no fiber. Impossible to be healthy without fiber. Impossible. Just It just won't work. Fiber is going to yeah. clean out those arteries, pull out the cholesterol. It's going to help you along your way. So if you are not getting fiber, the question isn't where do you get your protein? It's where do you get your fiber? So, I mean, I could just keep going with the fiber. Yes. Like yeah. it gets rid of excess hormones within our body, boosts our metabolism, keeps us fuller longer, stops us from overeating. Fiber is what is lacking. It keeps our gut biome healthy. And I mean, here's a, here, I'm going to drop one right now. Our gut biome, when healthy, yes. gives off more serotonin than our brain. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to love that stomach. I'm going to love that gut biome. And I'm going to feed the plants out of it. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's yeah. so true. And as we talk about trends going forward, that is going to be a big one. Working on your gut biome to get yeah. your own healthy state back. You know, we talked about changing lifestyle yeah. disease, but oh, hey, um, we could also talk about like protecting oneself from coronavirus doesn't mean you won't get the coronavirus. Right? It just means that you are strengthening your immune system with plants, vegetables, fruit, so that you can recover faster if you do get it. I've had a lot of doctors on this show talking about exactly just that. So, wow. you know, it, if, if anything, uh, this is the time of the empowered consumer. So please do not disempower yourself by shopping out the responsibility of your health to someone else. Because I can tell you, they don't have your best intentions in mind. So you got to take back your own health. And Stephanie and I are here to help you. <laughs> I, I, I want to bounce off of that right there. I really like to talk about this. I had control and I really want to encourage people. You have the control to do this. You have control of what you put in your grocery cart. You have control of what you bring home. And I want you, you people to focus on what they do have control on in our health we do have a lot more control than we think. We've been leaving it into the hands of other people, but it's right here. It's in your hands. You, yes. can, do, you can do this. Yes, and I'll say that that is a really positive upswing of the diet. So we've been focusing on like, hey, you lose weight and you feel great. You've got that confidence from that and you reverse those lifestyle diseases. But the joy and the confidence that comes from taking back your own health and being successful at it, not being on this like yo-yo diet thing that never works, is, is very powerful. So that's why we're always talking about it because we got that you know, high from taking back our own health and feeling like, oh gosh, it's possible. It didn't just change, save my life. It changed my life. I was, like you said, a, a stay at home, sedentary, you know, housewife. I did not do anything. And then I'm, I started a nonprofit. I'm coaching people, helping people reverse disease. This is an entire, everybody I've worked with that makes this change. You watch this happen to their life. Everything changes. We have more energy. We have more drive. We have more future. It's real. And we really become more mindful and more compassionate. Isn't it nice to watch? It happens on accident. 
It's, it's beautiful. Yes. The, the ripple effect of just this one change for you yeah. is, again, the basics. You're going to take back your own health and you're going to lose some yeah. weight and you're going to feel better. But you start to see the environmental impact of the food supply chain. You start yeah. to feel like, oh, gosh, I can make a difference therein by eating. I don't have to stand on the street corner with a with a sign. I could just eat three times a day. You and your right. dollars are so incredibly powerful because when you decide to oh, align yeah. that purchasing power with your values, and your values might be anything from animal welfare to the environment to wanting a better future for your kids yeah. to wanting a better health for your family. It can be a lot of things. Yeah. But as soon as you start that wave, the ripple effect just comes. It's so true. I am not shaming anybody for e eating meat. I'm not shame. You know, I was a huge meat eater, a huge, you know, all of that. That's not what, what I'm doing. I'm just sharing with what I found out. And I personally want to attach a megaphone to my mouth and tell everybody about it. You know, this mm -hmm. is something that will make you sleep better at night all around, whether it be the health for the environment or for the animals. And you're right. It all starts with what we put on our plate and how we, how we cook it. Mm -hmm. So I love that you say this. So I feel the same way. Absolutely not shaming anybody who's eating meat. We all grew up on meat. Who are we kidding? We all grew up on meat. But you know what? I also grew up, they made me take typewriting in high school. There is not an app or, a, you know, there's no invention to the typewriter that would make me ever take on the typewriter. I'm not dissing my teachers from high school because they made me take typewriter. I'm not shaming my parents because they had typewriters in the house. It's just that typewriters have come and gone and they no longer serve me. So I, it's not a judgment. It's just that typewriters don't work for me anymore. In fact, landlines don't work for me either. So there's not an invention to the landline, right? That would make me say, oh, you know, we've just advanced. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here. We're just moving on to that which serves us that well, which is better for us is it science science is backing it up and until there is another diet that reverses disease this is the default of so i'm making my house a blue zone i don't know about you but like we it. have gold i am running to break i hate to do it we'll be right back plant-based life and style oh my gosh we went over i couldn't stop myself what's wrong with me here we go we're back. It's one based life and style. We're having so much fun here. Oh my gosh. Um, thanks for everyone being with me today. I'm just loving what we're doing. Uh, okay. Here I am with Stephanie Ignafo of Plantspiration. We've been talking tips and how to just, you know, have a great time basically by feeling better. So um, we talked a little bit about it, but uh, what are some of your favorite recipes, Stephanie? Well, I'm obsessed with this almond smoky nut ball. You know, we can have cheese yeah. still going plant-based. I'm all about no oil. That is what my focus is, you know. Yeah. So it's just the cheese balls I love to make with the almonds. I love my cream cheese, uh, tomato and basil pinwheel. Okay, this is a great hors d'oeuvre I would love to share. I'll send the recipes, make sure everybody can get them maybe. Yeah. Um, some of my favorites, yeah, nachos. I mean, I know for... I know we're still going to be eating nachos all year long. So that's, those are my favorites right there. Yeah, I love that. Um, you probably have the same recipe. If not, I'll share it with you or you can share it with me. But so on my website, elizabethalvano.com slash recipes, I've got this great nacho recipe. It's, you're not going to believe me folks, but you bake a potato with it. You're at the same time. This is how simple this is. You put a carrots and a potato in the oven. You go take a shower. You get on with your life. You come back. You've got a potato and carrots ready. Put them in a blender, add a little bit of nutritional yeast. You've got cheese right oh, there. Yeah. And then I put it over whole corn tortillas with uh, some salsa. And I'm, you know, if I do, sometimes I'll do things like um, I'll season tempe. Tempe is so good for you. Oh my gosh, fermented the soybean. The best. I'll season yeah. that with my paprika, cumin, and soy sauce to be a little meaty. Then I'll do, you know, onions and olives and uh, tomatoes and, you know, go to town with some cilantro on top. I mean, please. It's, it's so never good. ending. I could, I mean, I, I didn't know I could make casseroles out of spaghetti squash with peas and a cashew cream sauce. I mean, this is just stuff I've never eaten, stuff I make yeah. for people that they're just blown away. It doesn't end. The food is endless. And I get the to food eat it all. Is and you get to eat it all. You are eating away the world's problems as well as your own. I mean, I just don't know what to say. Like what, I mean, how often in life do you see so many problems, you know, childhood obesity, we're not even talking about you and your family anymore now, you yeah. know, environmental problems, they all have one answer, one simple answer. So, and you are the change agent. You can do yeah. it folks. That's yes, you can. Beautiful. You really can. 
You really can. Okay. So back to some of our tips. I wonder um, what else you tell people when they're making the transition to make it easier on themselves. Well, they have to surround themselves with all those foods and get them ready to go. Your fruits, your vegetables, it may seem a little plain at first, but the way we stick to this best is by keeping fed. And it might be new, you know, lots of new stuff going on. But the more you eat through this, the less likely you are to fail. You're going to keep going strong. I love to tell people, get your thin inspiration out. Get your dress out that you want to get in. Get your oh, yeah. get your pants out this year, you guys. Everybody's hitting the gym, but nobody's hitting the grocery cart with the good foods on top of it. So oh, yes. stay motivated with the right foods. The produce section, that's the vegan section. Go to town in there. Yeah, those are some great tips. The simple ones, eat an apple before you eat a meal. That's like negative you know, calorie loading. We're less likely to eat over if we eat a little bit beforehand, drink your waters, eat your plants off, just don't restrict and keep surrounding yourself with good food, good people. It's all about the the happiness this year, the positivity, the mindfulness and the compassion. Yeah. Videos, documentaries, now's the time we're all hunkered down, load up on the inspiration listen to all of Elizabeth's podcasts and all. I mean, this is all inspiring stuff that keeps people on track. Try the recipes and keep the simple ones. Eat a baked potato, okay? Keep it simple, but don't stress yourself out. If you fall off and you eat something bad, so what? We've all done it. If we fall down on the ground. We don't lay there and cry about it. We get right back up and keep going. And that's what I tell people to do. So what? It happens. Keep going. Yeah, I love what you're saying. I also tell people like, help yourself out, you know, so anything that's bad in the kitchen, get it out of the kitchen. Like don't make life hard on yourself. Also, um, shop in advance so that you have stuff in the kitchen. So you have enough tools in your toolbox to make fun and exciting things. Again, I can help you with recipes. um, But Stephanie can as well, you know, ElizabethAlvano.com slash recipes or plantspiration.org. Get your recipes. So so you know, when you go shopping, you're picking up enough things that you have got some creative options at home. And again, we're talking about like a stick of potato and some carrots in the oven and roast it. So we're not talking like serious cooking, you know, it's not hard. Um, Well, look at the lasagna for PCRM. That's great. We've got, it's just just lasagna noodles, your jar of sauce, and a quick ricotta cheese that you can make. So we can go from like a cu- chili with three ingredients, black beans, corn, and salsa. It doesn't get, I mean, there's ways to get into the deep recipes, like you said, Elizabeth, and there's ways to keep it nice and simple. And Yes. Yes. Keep it, keep it nice and simple because it doesn't have to be like that big a deal. And then I would also say prepare your food in advance. So let's say, you know, you're making dinner tonight, make like enough for three serving or three dinners, freeze the other two. And then when you're like, oh shoot, I'm really like, now I don't know what to do. And I didn't get to go shopping this week. Doesn't matter. Pull it out of the freezer. You are ready. You are ready and prepared. So that way, when you cook, cook once, but cook extra and then hold on to it. So you've got leftovers and stuff just kind of makes your life easy. Um, But okay, eating isn't all about it. A lot of it's mental. I wonder if you have any, you know, positivity things that you tell people as they kind of sometimes maybe they might struggle the first week. I really do. Um, well, support groups. I have a support group going for Plantspiration. So this is great for people. And I do support group outside of my kitchen because I do say it's not always in the kitchen. Kitchen, right. It is what's going on up here. You have to tell yourself that you can do this. And I mean, whoever's listening. I don't know mm-hmm. if you heard my story or saw the rest of it. I spent 40 years of my life telling myself I can't or that mm-hmm. I tried. Um, you can do this. This is attainable. This works for everybody who does it. So you got to work on that head, that mindset right now. You got to love yourself enough. Your body's been helping you breathe. It's been helping you get around. We've been putting a lot of junk in it. It's 2021. It's time to love yourself back. And that starts with the food you put in it. That's number one, get your head ready. Um, and keep the positive stuff around you. If somebody's dissing you or they're concerned about what you're doing, you know, Elizabeth, I was very overweight and very sick my entire life. And when I went vegan, suddenly everybody was concerned about what I was doing, but nobody cared when I was guzzling a gallon of vodka and pounding pills and eating, you know, myself to death. So focus on you and what you're doing. Don't worry about what everyone else is saying. That's your mindset right there. Come back to Elizabeth. Come back to to me. We'll tell you how awesome you're doing and how awesome you are. 
So it's a lot about the positivity, surrounding yourself with the people that support you, telling them to support you. You know, Mm -hmm. if we walk in a restaurant with an allergy, say we can't have nuts, we're respectful, we would never think twice. Well, I'm allergic to death and disease. And that's the way I think about those animals on my plate. So be, be strong. It's not like it was uh, eight years ago for us when we said we were vegan and we were like, (gasps) what? Now people are ready to embrace it, support it. You know, and if people have a problem with what you're doing, it's not so much what you're doing. It's just what their reflection of themselves. Um, Keep plowing through. Don't stop. Don't give up. It's the, it's the year of the plants. It's the year of the plants. It's, I have so many inspirational tips as well. We're going to end the show because we've run out of time. So I'm just going to give you guys one on the way out. Um, this is your journey. It's not about making yeah. it to the mountaintop. It is about loving every step along the way. Okay, seems a little cliche, but really enjoy all that you're learning. This is you taking back your life. What could be more joyful? It's been Plant-Based Life and Style. You can go to plantspiration.org or elizabethelcano.com slash recipes. Find us there. We are here to help. And Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. We're done with radio, but we're not done with podcasts. So let's keep going. I think there's a lot of inspirational things. So I had to really like combine all my inspirational notes into one to, to, to fit yeah. in that. Um, Did I roll with you all right? You were, you were fantastic. We're, we're still on podcast um, and we're still actually on um, live Facebook live and stuff. Facebook, Twitter. I love all of you. Thank you, YouTube, for being here. Um, so, you know, Woody Illinois says 90% is showing up. It doesn't even matter if your day is 100% successful or not. You're taking your life back for you. That's a huge win. However, that day shakes out for you. Just switching that mindset, even if you don't get to changing the foods, just switch that, that you are doing your life for you, for the betterment of you. That's a huge one. I did talk about the journey. It's a little bit cliche, but kind of try to enjoy that every step. Hey, I'm learning today. I'm doing something new for myself today. I'm doing something that's going to, you know, whether I fall off or not, I'm doing something for me that I'm excited about that's going to add years to my life. So that's super fun. Um, Shout out to your body. Can you imagine that we're dumping all this crap into it for decades? And there it is, bouncing right back out to help you. Can you believe it? Your body's like still there helping you out no matter how bad we've been to it for so long. Pretty grateful. Pretty grateful for that. Pretty grateful for that. No, no, no kidding. And then I love what you say about like focus on you and be strong because I always feel like, hey, this is you sticking up for yourself. You're never going to regret sticking up for yourself. So, you know, people get it. They get the vision or they don't. Whatever. That's their deal. But, you know, Elizabeth, if somebody was sitting out front on your car and sitting on the hood and putting some dents in it, we would run out there. We would be freaking out. What are you doing to my, you know, car? We wouldn't want it ruined. We would never put any bad gas in it. We really have to start giving ourselves that much appreciation, (sighs) gratitude and love. And And it gets easier when you start putting that much value on yourself. Yes. And you know, the funny thing is, is that people might diss it in the beginning, but when they see the results you're getting and they see how positive and you see that you're not backing down, they start to back down. They start to say, oh, well, never mind. I guess I was trying to bully her, but I can't. Okay. I'll move on to bullying the next person. And that's what it is. Because as you say, you would never, you know, eat nuts if you had a nut allergy because everybody else was like, oh, but you have to eat nuts to fit in. So why the heck would you do it here? Um, Yeah. Yeah. Take a stand for yourself for sure. And then I'll just add one more thing because I know Stephanie's got stuff to say too, but um, be a label reader. Read those labels, folks. You get, you get, you know, power through knowledge. So read those labels. And if you don't want to be ingesting corn syrup, for example, which is often in tomato sauce and ketchup, come on, craziness, you you can get products that don't have corn syrup in them that are great for making pasta, for example. So, you know, read that label. Yeah, there's great tips with that. Those are great tips. Speaking of reading labels, uh, number one rule, if you're really looking to get to optimum health, if it says over three grams of fat, I say just put it back. We're going to hold off. So those are tips for weight loss right now. Under three grams of fat, it's great. Um, if it says cholesterol in your ingredients, you know what that means. No way. Yeah, animal fat. Zero, yeah. So the ra- la- label reading is, uh, it might be a little tedious the first couple times you go through the grocery store, but after that, it's a breeze. You know what to get. Um, and these are little things that do hold people back. They say, Stephanie, the scale's not moving or my you know, diabetes isn't reversing. And I say, you know, they say they've been whole food plant based. But when I go in and look at some of the labels, we see oil in this oil in this sugars in this, 
you know, and, and maybe those are vegan and maybe those stay plant-based on it. But when we're talking about the reversing of disease and the optimum health, these are serious things that can make it or break it for you. And, and we want you to eat more and less of that. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. You got to be a, a label reader because stuff's in there that you don't want, and it has to be not just plant based because you know sugars plant. Well, I guess some sugar technically, I guess, isn't. But let's say let you know maple syrup, for example, is you know uh, vegan, but you probably don't want to be guzzling maple syrup, and that was kind of me back in the day. So <laughs> it's I possible. am a little bit like Elf. I am a little bit like Elf. I do love maple syrup. That's true. Um, but there is something to be said about that the cleaner it is the you know the less it's been stripped of its you know nutrition it's why we're so uh, gravitating towards the whole the more whole the better yeah yes yes well um okay just a, a little bit of um some exit questions for you i'd love to ask these of people on the way out so um besides going whole food plant-based uh what do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know now that i have a future Oh, don't you love yeah. that, everybody? Well, I have that, a that, I mean, if I didn't if that, think it, mm -hmm. if that doesn't seal the deal for people, I don't know what does. Yes. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so happy that you shared that with us. That is just so incredibly beautiful. It, yes. It's, it's true, though. It really is. I didn't think about traveling or, you know, what my 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, we think we're just getting old and we're just going to sit there. Well, it's, I'm doing circles around people half my age. And I know this is just the beginning. I've got a future that I've never seen before. I've got goals. I've got dreams. And I feel they're, they're more attainable than ever. And I know that I'm not the only one. This kind of is a side effect of the plant-based life. Once we get that fat out of all the arteries, all the veins, it truly opens up and it changes the way that we view things. Am I right, Elizabeth? 100% and you have your life back. And yeah. what's even better, you have a bigger life than you ever thought you could have. Absolutely. There's so much more. I mean, let's just start with we were eating the same three, if I may say, the same three dead animals. Already my life has got 80,000 different recipes going on nowadays. It's changed so much just right there. I can't imagine what else is out there for me to try. It's so fun. I love that you say that because I also thought like, oh my gosh, if I leave meat and dairy, what am I going to eat? And then I hadn't realized, oh my gosh, my life was actually very small on meat and dairy. I was eating the same three dead animals all the time, you know, ham and cheese sandwich, ham and cheese sandwich. And then I yeah. switched over and I was like, oh my God, sweet potatoes, eggplant. Who's been hiding these things from me? Brussels sprouts. Dates. Wait a minute. Dates. Who? Dates. I, oh, dates. dates. Figs. Yes, I know. <laughs> you know. I know. In the world, this is truly candy. If you guys and are I, into, if you guys are into donuts, like go straight to the dates, the nice soft, wishy ones. It's a crispy cream. I'm just saying. <laughs> so true. I love it. Uh, okay, so super fast on our way out. Two quick things. One, if you're having a bad day, is there a phrase that you say to yourself to get yourself back in the groove? <laughs> I don't know that I could say it out loud, but just hey. The heck with it. We all have bad days. It happens. Just yeah. focus on the good stuff. What's next? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. Move on. Yeah, it's a bad day. Let's move on. Yeah, like pick ourselves up and let's get with the program. It happens. It happens. Okay, you're super busy. You're running around because Plantspirations is like, you know, people can't get enough. Uh, you didn't have a chance to have lunch. What is your favorite snack on the go? Ah, bananas. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, I have bananas all over the place everywhere on my bike, in my car. They're a key for people to stay on track. Just fuel up with some bananas and you'll be able to make a good decision later. Bananas it is. We exit on bananas. Stephanie, I want to thank you for being with me. I hope you'll come back. This is so fun. Love having you yeah. around. Yeah, Absolutely, so fun. Elizabeth. Thank you. My pleasure. If anybody wants or recipes, please go to elizabethalbano.com slash recipes and hit up plantspiration.org. Uh, either of us can help you make the transition. We both have some programs, but Stephanie's got great stuff on her site. So please check that out. Um, support groups, always a great idea that she does. Just love that. And then we're yeah. both on um, social media. You can find us anywhere there. So hit us up, everybody. And happy new year. Happy new year, Elizabeth. Thank you. Don't go anywhere.